Morning everybody. I'm just about ready to roll inside here where I'm going to get loaded. I'm in Headingley, Manitoba, which is west of Winnipeg. We're just doing some local stuff right now because in the U.S. they're uh, still celebrating their 4th of July. It's the 5th of July when I'm filming this today. So they're still celebrating their long weekend. They had an extra long weekend. So there's no freight moving south right now. So we're staying in Canada here keeping ourselves busy. I'm going to pick up a load here then I believe I have three drops in southern Manitoba. I think there's three. We'll find out once they get it on the trailer. I'm about to go inside. They're going to get here in five minutes. We'll get this day started. Solidary, MP. We're arriving at the first stop. We've had about a mile and a quarter of gravel road to get here. I believe this is my entrance here. Yep. Yep. First of three. It's not going to take long today at all. Which is good because I need to get home and mow the lawn. The grass just keeps growing. And with all the rain we've been having, look at all the water in the ditches here too. Southern Manitoba has just been getting hammered with rain this, this year. We already had to delay our fence. Remember we're building the fence at the back of our yard? And uh, it was supposed to get done actually today, but the yard is all squishy. <laughs> it's, all, it's all soggy from all the rain and their equipment that they'd bring in there to help build the fence would dig up our lawn and we don't want that to get damaged. So we're gonna wait until August and hopefully it'll dry up a bit by then. I've been here before, so I know where to go. I gotta go around the back, and they'll unload me inside with a, a forklift or a crane. All right, so they took their freight off the other side there. So we're done here. Just gonna close her up. their fields well so are these gravel roads but uh, those are just for the farmers <laughs> we don't use those look at that oh I'd get stuck right away got a truck coming from my left and then we'll be going Right now, we'll get 
this off before lunch. Run over to Plum Coulee. They'll probably start unloading me around 1. Get out of there by 1.30. Maybe sooner. It's like 2 hours back. 1.30 to 3.30. Oh yeah, I should be home. Showered up. Cleaned up. Sitting at the table for dinner. By like 5 or 6 o'clock. I'll probably say six o'clock because then that'll give me a little time in my shop to wipe down the truck and polish her up a little bit so it's ready for next week. Right, we're here at number two. It is 20 to noon, so we should be able to get unloaded before lunch. And that will work out perfect because then we'll leave here around lunchtime. We're gonna drive to Plum Coulee. We'll probably get there around 12.30. And we just gotta wait a little bit, we'll get the truck all ready, we'll start unloading right after they're back from lunch, and then boom, we're done. Just let uh, everybody back home know where I am. Send in a message saying I have arrived at stop number two. If this computer will work, man, this thing's slow. Two in Altona. That just sends them a little alert that I have arrived here so they know where I am on my route and that I'm making progress and that I'm not dragging my feet being lazy. Whew. That sun is hot. If people ever wonder why I have a farmer tan every summer, this is why. I'm always outside in the sun. And they always make me wear a shirt. Uh, he might have to grab that from the other side. It's kind of on the driver's side. Oh, maybe he can reach it, he can pull it back. All right, he's got it. One more piece on there now, just like that, the 37 feet. So he might have to grab that one from this side. I'll have to move this because this freight here is for my Plum Coulee stop, and that is his. So I'm thinking, I don't know if his forks are long enough to grab that from the other side. Either way, this is gonna want to fall down off of there. So what he's got to work around that I guess you might have to pull these off and then pull that off and then put those back on we'll see I've got my straps here just the ones I'll need for these I left those on I rolled the rest of them up but as soon as he's done I'll strap those two bundles back down we'll be over on our way over to Plum Coulee Man, we might be done, like, before 1 o'clock. I do have to drive all the way back, though. So. We'll see. I think it's about, what, 3? It's not 3 hours back, is it? 2? If I get done by 1, be back by 3. I have to disconnect the trailer, do my paperwork. Yeah, he's going to put those back on once he's done them. Oh, that's what he's going to do. Oh, that's smart. Let's shift it over. So now he'll go around to the other side and unload it from that side, which means we've got to move to that side of the truck. You always got to be on the same side as the forklift so that they can see where you are out of the way. And there he goes, that's the last piece. The last piece for here. Still got two more pieces left for the next one. Off to our last stop. That went very well. Nice and smooth. Bing, bang, boom. Out of here. I've got to build some kind of plate underneath my engine fan on my truck. When I have my air conditioning on in the summer like this, the engine fan wants to kick on more often, right? And then I drive through these 
gravel lots or dust lots and the engine fan, all of the air that goes onto the engine blows straight down onto the ground and just poof. Causes a huge cloud of dust to just envelop my truck and my truck's instantly just filthy. I'd like to create like a, a barrier plate there so that the wind doesn't hit the gravel, the wind goes elsewhere. Have any of you done that on your Kenworths before, Peterbilt's? Does your truck do that too, the engine fan? Some trucks that I, most trucks I've driven don't do that, but this one, man, that engine fan kicks on. It seems like it's blowing straight down. All that wind. All that dust comes and settles right on the truck. When I go over gravel lots like this, I turn my air conditioning off. I just forgot. I always get reminded as soon as the dust cloud appears. Can I get around here? I don't know if I can get out here. I cannot. Ha! Huh. Well, I guess I went the wrong way. I'm gonna have to back out of this one. Lucky for me, there was a bit of a space right behind me. Shove my trailer into and we'll continue back where we came from. Seems like this driveway would have been uh, one that goes all the way around, but well, I guess not. Not a problem. If I can get in, I can get out. aluminum like usual cleaned off for the weekend so it doesn't sit there with dirt on it so it doesn't stain it or wreck it it feels weird in here without the camper right I got all my stuff sort of just randomly filling up the space so that I don't feel alone <laughs> our friends are borrowing the camper for the next couple of weeks so it won't be in here so I have more space but old blue is still in his spot and uh, you're not going to be too lonely here without the camper, are you? You're going to be lonely? I'll suck it up, buttercup. I'm going home. It's so hot. I was just talking to my friend Moses. He's from Virginia. And he was uh, sending me some snaps of uh, uh, his backyard. Uh, him and his kids, they were in their pool. 
and playing in the sandbox stuff in the backyard. He's like, oh, it's 100 degrees here right now. So I sent him a snap back too, without looking at the temperature. I'm like, oh man, it's gotta be about 100 here too. I am so hot. And I showed him, like I am, I'm sweating buckets. Look at, you can see the sweat line here. I'm sweating like crazy. I have my pickup truck in front of me here, idling to cool off the cab before I go home. I'm like, oh yeah, it's like 100 degrees here too. I look at the temperature. It's 75. It feels so hot. I'm a Canadian, don't make fun of me. Okay, make fun of me, I don't care. People make fun of us all the time. That's what we're here for. Canadians are like those Americans up north that you make fun of all the time, right? We're okay with that, that's fine. We make fun of ourselves all the time. No one can roast a Canadian better than a Canadian. Just saying that. But uh, yeah, so anyways, I was talking to him. I had just cleaned off the aluminum here. I'm like, man, it's so hot. It's like 100 degrees. So I thought it was, uh, so 100 degrees is about 37 Fahrenheit. Uh, pardon me, 37 Celsius. And he sent the temperature from where he is in Virginia to me in Celsius. And it was 37 degrees Celsius where he is in uh, Southern Virginia. So I'm like, oh yeah, it's probably that hot here too. I look at the temperature, 24.4 degrees Celsius. <laughs> uh, for me, that's hot. But anyway, so uh, we got old blue tucked away, cleaned off. And I'm gonna go home right now and see the family.